Now, many of you, of course, know her for her role in the memorable series Taxi, but what makes my next guest even more remarkable is her superior autobiographical memory. She remembers the details of every single day of her entire life, and her new book, Total Memory Makeover, can help you, right? Mary yes, Lou Hanner can. <laughs> can help you and your memory. And only 12 people in the world have this. Uh, is it an affliction or a blessing? No, it's a blessing. It's, it's a, a blessing. total blessing. Yeah, and, and you know, I'm sure there are going to be so many more, and they've actually found a few more, but the 12 of us, they've written the, the paper about, which comes out in the fall, that Dr. Um, uh, uh, James McGaw uh, has written about. And the whole thing just came about a few years ago. I mean, I always had an unusual memory, but it was only recently, and the whole 60 Minutes thing that happened, that they even had a name for it. Oh, so really? And so they, really they, they studied you and they found other people like you? Yes. Well, they studied a, a woman by the name of Jill Price first, and people were saying, oh, there's a woman on television who has your memory. And then I found out from Leslie Stahl that she was offered the story and turned it down because she said, oh, it's not that unusual. I have it's a friend, Mary Lou Hatter. Everyone's got it. Yeah, Everyone's right. got it. So that's how the whole thing kind of started. Can the book yeah. actually help somebody with an average autobiographical memory? Absolutely. And you know, I've been teaching classes for a long time, even before the whole 60 Minutes thing uh -huh. came about. I've been fascinated by memory my whole life. So I, I just started noticing things about people. And when I taught these classes, I would, I would make, uh, you know, make up these theories and stuff and then try them out on people and, and do some of the things that I just did naturally since I was very young. And people's memories come back in, in ways that they just can't believe it. And I think some people would think you have a, a uh, photographic memory, but that's not really it. I've had patients that have photographic memories. Right. So they literally can photograph like it, the page and yeah. then read it you know, back to themselves. It's yeah. crazy, which is different. And they Very may different. not remember what they did when they were 13. Right, exactly, exactly. They might not remember when they, you know, years later where they were when they read that piece of right. paper. You now know, you, you and I, I met your children one time about yes. 12 years ago, probably? It was, I can tell you exactly when it was. Uh, it was uh, September the 1st of 2001. It was actually a week and a half before 9-11. And it was a Saturday. Do you remember where we were? We were at a friend's house in uh, sort of towards Pacific Palisades. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, Judith, Judith Regan was there, yes, right? That's yeah. right. And it was her friend, really. It was we were Karen Mandenbox. Okay. Right, yes. that's right. It was at her house. At her house. And your kids were there. And I heard your kids speaking. They apparently have some <laughs> genetic stuff, too. I went, Mary Lou. Are you, do you understand? <laughs> that is not the way a seven-year-old normal speaks. And you're like, yeah, 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 I yeah, know. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. They were and so now they're in grad school and they're 12. No, yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> that's right. But, but they, um, they, my younger one especially shows signs of having this. And my older one is, you know, they're both very, very smart. Exceptional. But, yeah. Thank you. Do you Thanks. think it's genetics and environment? Or? You know, I, I definitely think, for me, there was a combination of nature and nurture. I think I was definitely born with something. But I think that not only did it help me as a person, as an actress, as just being different from my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. It was something that I loved to do. I loved the time traveling of, of going back. Yeah, and I it was fun meditative that, in a I way. understand. There's, I got a little bit of this, too. And, uh, and I understand that it's also associated with OCD. I got a little yeah. bit of that, too. I don't. They tested me for that. I don't have that. Don't, Somebody don't, the other day said, oh, are you on the Asperger's you know, spectrum? Uh, spectrum? Are you? No, I've been tested for everything. And it's just I'm just a girl with a really good memory. Okay, <laughs> let's take some calls. John in California, what do you got for us? Hi, Dr. True and Mary Lou. Hi. Are there exercises we can do to actually strengthen our memory, particularly when we're getting older? Well, I think everyone can strengthen their memory when, you know, when they're young, when they're old, at any time. It's something, it's like your, it's like a muscle that you want to exercise as much as possible. I think a certain consciousness as you go through your day. I also think paying attention to, I describe it as APR in the book. Uh, you know, anticipation, participation, recollection. We are always in the state of that. Mm. You're always looking forward to something. You're always, you know, Remember. in the middle of something, and you're always recalling something. Huh. And the more you do that throughout the, your day, the more you just do a little mental snapshot or take a sound check or whatever, the more you'll, you'll the faster you'll become at remembering certain so, things. So some piece of this is an attentional mechanism. If you just direct yes. your attention to what you're experiencing and, and try to file it, is that sort of what yes, you're... Yes, and also if you play to your strengths. One of the things I really noticed in my memory classes is that everybody was remembering things differently. And when I realized that they, there were sound people, you know, visual people, taste, smell, touch people, 
that, that's how they re were recording memories, storing them, and then being able to retrieve them. And when you play to that strength as well, I, I keep using this as an example. Sometime a very visual man is married to a very auditory woman, and he'll say, she remembers everything I said in that argument. And she'll say, he just remembers me standing there shaking my finger at him, you know. And it's like we just record things so differently, and then we're able to retrieve them. So play to your strength. If if music brings something back for you, use the hook. You, use the hook. Use that hook. Yeah, people just don't know how to use their hooks as much because they think memorizing is memorizing a list, memorizing a deck of cards, memorizing people's names. Oh. It's really using your life, your story, right. which is on your mental hard drive anyway. Bring it forward and then let it help your future. I wonder if you could have an emotional hook, too, if you sure. remember. Because I'm actually having an experience sitting here with you. I'm going to use my emotional hook oh. and tell you. Well, this is interesting. I don't think I've ever told you this. Oh. I remember when I was in college, I was living in Boston, and I was depressed. And I was finishing my organic chemistry and overwhelmed and trying to get to medical school. And I went in one night. I was alone and on TV. You were on The Tonight Show. Oh. And David Letterman was the co-host. Do you remember this? Oh, it was, he was sitting in. It would have been about a year. It, it was 79? 79. August 22nd. Summer, summer of 79. Yeah, summer yes, of 79. that's when it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, and he was kind of all over I you. I had a he, white dress on. And, and he was, was so excited. He was like the first time. That and he was I so was excited to meet you, and he was very taken with you and stuff. And yeah. I thought, God, she looks so cool. I should be able to meet people like that. Why aren't I meeting people like that? See? And you probably haven't thought about that in a long, long time. Well, it's, this is now, it's 40 years, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so, but, well, 79, but, yeah. but isn't that interesting yeah, that how life so comes funny. around? And like see, that's that what I'm saying. It's like, it, it, it's in there. There's never been anyone I've worked with that didn't bring things back and say, oh my gosh, you know, wow, I didn't even know I remembered that. And then it just comes flooding back. It's really something. And it's very powerful. You know, it's our... It's, it's our strongest defense against meaninglessness that we have. Memory. Remembering, yeah, because your, making, yeah, your yeah. story yeah. Is, is your, you know, your memory is your, your story. Well, it's interesting. We're treating people, we encourage them to make a cohesive narrative of their life that they mm -hmm. own. They own their life. It's interesting. I have not thought about it being explicitly about memory. Right. Let's take a quick Facebook. It says from BB, is now that you, uh, how old are you now? I just turned 60. Okay, now that you're ago. 60, does... <laughs> I guess it's got a name. It's and that's not hyperthymesia anymore. They're not calling it anymore. It's okay. super, highly superior autobiographical okay, memory. Which is a different H Sam. Have you noticed it changing or weakening as you've have you gotten older? No, uh, it's it, it it now I'm remembering my kids too. <laughs> so it's, and it's my different kids too. It's different too. than it's different. working memory and recall the names and things like that are typically what go with aging. That's uh -huh. different than autobiographical. It's different. Right? Autobiographical memory I think can even get stronger in some ways because you it's like the more you have the more you can cross connect information so you're something is always reminding you of things anyway and it's it's uh, it's a very powerful tool that we have to to use in our lives now before we went to this segment you said you're always getting asked the same questions what do you want to be asked what would you wish people would ask you about this um i don't know uh, more about how how they can be helped because i really think that you know I, I i don't want it to be like oh mary lou and this thing that she does and and whatever because it's not so much some of it. Yeah, everybody can do more than they realize. And I think, too, that I don't want people to feel like, like you know, oh, well, I'm j I just have a bad memory and I'm just going to go through my life and she's got a good one. Mm -hmm. the, the, it's in there, I'm telling you. And I feel like it's, it's one of the most powerful tools we have in our lives to predict our future, to make sure that those red flags that we may have seen before, that we're ignoring, that we learn from them, that we can recall certain things and say, okay, I'm not going to, overeat, I'm not going to overdrink, I'm not going to gamble, I'm not, you know, if we don't bring some of that information from our past to our present, we're never going to change anything, from any an, behavior. From an evolutionary perspective, that's probably what its original function was, yeah. to, to learn, remember where we put things, remember where the food was good, remember where right. the animals track, whatever, the, remember how to track an animal. Yeah, I, I talk about that in the book. Did you just see that? No, I, I didn't. Oh, that's, that's so funny. But we're sort of tuned in in some weird way. Yes, And then I imagine course. exercise and diet are important part of oh, this, too. Well, what's good for your body is good for your brain. You know, I have a whole chapter in the book about that, too. It's like whatever you're doing, you know, if it's oxygen, exercising, it's hydration, Blood all supply. that stuff. Mary yeah, Lou had her total memory makeover. Here is the book. Take a picture of it. There it is. Where are we going to go? Yes. This, there we go. It's better. It is absolutely a pleasure to have you. Thank, Thank you, you for always. coming. It's I always do great to appreciate see. it.